otra vez Stronger than the power of the grave Constant in the trial and the change This one thing remains One thing remains Your love, your love never fails and never gives up It never runs out on me Your love never fails and never gives up It never runs out on me never fails and never gives up it never runs out on me alone and on and on and on and on it goes till it overwhelms and satisfies my soul and I never ever have to be
Praise the Lord. Are you thankful for his love today? God's good. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you all being here today. Thank you for coming out and worshiping at Daystar. Appreciate all our visitors being with us today. Thank you so much for coming. It's good to see my good friend Randy here with us today. Uh, He snuck out from Covenant to come over here. Maybe today we'll get him straightened out and send him back over there. All right. (laughs) So good to see you all. Thank you so much. For coming to worship let me just remind you of a few things that's going on today and through this week we have our kids church uh worship service following our morning worship this morning so encourage our kids to be a part of that tonight we do have our regular scheduled service at six o'clock so encourage you to be out for tonight's service prayer meeting here tomorrow night at six here at the church wednesday nights we're doing our bible studies uh for all our classes our adult class we've been working on the book of revelation We have our kids uh, club that's actually going to the nursing home this Wednesday night. So uh, that's always a good trip. So I encourage you to be a part of that. Our youth and young adults also have class on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Senior adult ministry is coming up uh, a couple of weeks. We have an event here at the church at at 6 p.m. There's a sign-up sheet out there on the welcome desk. So make sure that you sign up for that so they can make plans for that. Fifth Sunday singing is coming up the end of the month. Please make sure if you want to participate in this, see Kelsey by the 25th of July. And uh, that last Sunday night of the month, we'll be uh, having our fellowship and uh, fellowship and uh, worship time. So I encourage you to be a part of that. Ladies Fellowship's coming up the uh, 24th of July here at the church at 630. Uh, is there a sign-up sheet back there? Do you know? Probably will be if it's not already back there. Ladies, you got a fellowship coming up the 24th. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. We've got quite a few needs and requests that we're continuing to remember. Um, Sue's brother Steve, want to continue to remember him. Um, he's under hospice care. We're praying for the Lord to touch him and his wife Becky. Uh, they've also got a financial situation that they've got going on where they're going to have to sell their home. And uh, we're just praying for God to move in that situation and have his way. Continue to remember Tony Wall, who's undergoing uh, cancer treatments. Praying for God to touch him. We're praying for Kim, uh, Sister Jeanette's daughter Kim. We'll continue to pray for her. Um, that God would touch her and minister to her. Uh, Amy's dad, Richard, just spoke with Amy a few moments ago. He's doing some better, still needs a touch from the Lord, so remember him if you will. Uh, Sister Brenda uh, has a colonoscopy and endoscopy scheduled for the 20th of this month, so remember her if you will. Continue to remember Ronnie as he's undergoing his treatments, that God would touch him. Also pray for Sheila, uh, that God would give uh, her strength as she's walking with Ronnie through this journey. Pray for the Lord to touch him most of all spiritually and that God would just have his way in his life, not just spiritually but physically, that God would move in him and minister to him. Odell Hester, pray for, uh, pr- pray for him as he's dealing with cancer. Uh, Jody Wade, uh, last update I got, she was um, last update I got, she was back in ICU and needing a touch from the Lord. So remember, Jody, that God would touch her. She underwent five organs at one time, transplant five organs at one time. Uh, Josh, this is Ryan's brother. Uh, continue to pray for him. He has surgery tomorrow. So uh, pray for him, uh, that God would touch him and uh, minister to him. Most of all, spiritually for him also, that God would uh, do a work in his life. Pray for uh, Christy Griffin, uh, who's dealing with some sickness. Libby Helms, uh, the last update I got, she was in uh, ICU and not doing well with an uh, issue with her lungs. So continue to remember Libby, if you will. Uh, Susan's with us this morning, but continue to pray for her. Uh, they, as we put on the phone tree this week, uh, they did discover that she has some disease in some of her blood vessels. Uh, not really sure. We're just putting it in God's hands. That's the best way to put it. Uh, so continue remember Susan, if you will. Sister Voice is at home, uh, recovering from where she had fallen and broke her sternum. So remember her, if you will. Uh, Madison, continue remember her. She has her wisdom teeth extracted on Tuesday. Uh, the fun part about the wisdom teeth extraction is when they give them the laughing stuff. Then you find out all kind of stuff. So please, somebody have a video camera. And video that for us, because Madison's a hoot without the stuff. So I can imagine what Madison's going to be like with the stuff. So, uh, <laughs> so remember Madison as she goes in to have her wisdom teeth extracted. Uh, Victor, I talked to him yesterday. Uh, he's gotten something in his eye, his good eye, I believe it is. Uh, he's got something in there, and he's 
really having a battle. He had to go to the emergency room with it yesterday. Um, he's only got one good eye, and, and there's a piece of metal or something that's gone in there. So remember him. He's dealing with a lot of pain. Uh, also, Tommy Sigmund. Tommy uh, uh, was in the hospital. Is she still in the hospital? She, she's back home? All right. So remember Tommy. She's uh, dealing with some sickness and praying for some issues with the financial for the medications. Uh, Vanessa Lewis, who's dealing with breast cancer. Uh, we're praying for Vanessa that God would touch her and heal her. Pray for all these that are on the road traveling, that have been traveling this past week, maybe traveling home today, those that are taking off this coming week, that God would touch them and keep them safe. And uh, just look around the room, folks. We've got a handful of people that are normally here that are not here. Pray for them that God would touch them and be with them. He knows He knows what's going on. Y'all kind of spread out on me today. i got all kind of... I, listen, I'm preaching the gospel and fulfilling scripture today because I feel like I'm preaching to the four corners of the earth. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> it's all good. We'll fulfill scripture in this place today. God's good. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much. Let's pray together and uh, ask God to have his way in the service this morning. We're just believing and trusting for the Lord's will to be done. Let me just say this before we pray. It's not by chance or coincidence that you're here today. I believe that you have a divine appointment with God in this service this morning. I believe the Lord wants to touch and save and heal and deliver and do mighty works in your life. And I know that God can do it. If we ask and believe, all things are possible today. Amen. If you're not awake yet, I'll wake you up in just a little bit, I promise. But I want you to know that today is the day the Lord has made, and I have chosen to rejoice and be glad in it. What a great day it is to serve God. What a day, great day it is to come and rejoice and magnify the name of the Lord. And that's what we've come together today. And I've got good news. The Lord is here. The Bible said where two or three are gathered in His name, He said, I am in the midst of them. The Lord is here in this place today. So before we pray, can we just praise Him and welcome Him into the house of the Lord today? Can we just honor Him in this place? Before we ask Him for anything, can we just go ahead and welcome His presence in this house today? Father, we welcome You here today. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Have Your way, Your liberty in this house today. We magnify Your holy name. God, we worship You in this place. Come and abide in the praise of your people today I pray in Jesus name manifest your presence and your glory God in this house today save the lost deliver the bound sanctify the unclean fill with the Holy Ghost heal the broken I pray today in the name of Jesus Father we bring every need and request on our list today we pray God that you would have your way with cancer God you're the healer of cancer there are people that are sitting in this room that have been healed of cancer God because of your miraculous power and God what we bring to you today we know that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think according to the power that works in us. God, I thank you for that today. I pray, Lamb of God, that you would manifest your presence and glory in the lives of every person that's unable to be with us. God, there are some that are working. There are some that are traveling. There are some that are homesick. There are some, God, that have just become plain lazy and falling into the apathy of this last day of being. God, I pray that you would stir up that gift that is within them. God, stoke the fires of, 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 of relationship with you once again and help them to realize that they need to be fervent about the things of God in this last day. Father, I pray today that you would stir us in this house. God, I thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to come in to worship you and to praise you and to, manifest, and, and to and magnify your holy name. God, I praise you today. I pray, Lamb of God, that you would have your way. Touch every song that's sung, every word that's spoken, every music that's played, God, every lesson that's taught. God, those that are in the nursery, God, whatever the, that, that whatever obligations are being fulfilled today, I pray that your anointing will rest on everything that's done today. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor for you are worthy of it all. And we magnify your holy name. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. One more time. Would you give the Lord a praise? Come on, would you give the Lord a praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take a moment. We have some folks that come in. Shake hands, hug necks. Welcome someone to the house of the Lord. If you're looking for a different seat, now's a great time to find one. God bless you. So when I give you this opportunity, that's a great opportunity to move. Shake hands, hug necks, love on one another. We got some visitors, make them welcome.
on me, Almighty God. I am the one for whom nothing is too hard. I am the shepherd and I am the door. I am the good news to the bound and the poor. I am. I am. He's the I am. For whom nothing is too hard, I am the shepherd, and I am the door, I am the good news to the bound and the poor, I am, I am, I am, I am. Sacrifice for sin. I am your redeemer, the beginning and the end. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am Jehovah, and I am the King. I am Messiah. And I am the Christ, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. I am, I am, I am, I am. I am the bread, and I am the wine. I am your future. Pass behind. I am the one in the midst of two or three. I am your tabernacle. I am your jubilee. I am. I am. I am. I am. am. Rachel, sing that third verse again. I am Jehovah. I am Jehovah. I am the high priest and I am the Christ. I am the resurrection and I am the life. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am am hope. I am peace. I am joy. Your stress, I am strength, I am faith, I am love, I am power, I am your freedom, this very hour, I am hope, I am peace, I am joy, I am rest, I am your comfort and relief from your stress, I am strength, I am faith, I am love, I am power, I am your freedom, this very hour, I am hope, hope, I am peace, I am Comfort and relief from your stress. I am strength, I am faith, I am love, I am power. I am your freedom this very hour. behind. I am the one in the midst of two or three. I am your tabernacle. I am your jubilee. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am hope. I am Come. 
comfort and relief from your stress. I am strength, I am faith, I am love, I am power. I am your freedom this very hour. I am hope, I am peace, I am joy, I am rest. I am your comfort and relief from your stress. I am strength, I am faith, I am love, I am power. I am your freedom this very hour. of your heart this morning. I will be the one, I will be the one who worships all of my attention. I want to be the one you're looking for. Are you looking for someone? Are you looking for someone to love you? No, my heart is with you. I want to be the one you're looking for. Are you looking for me? Are you looking for someone to love you? No, my heart is with you. I want to be the one you're looking for. It's when we're finally face to face. When we're finally face to face. All I Oh, 
victory. He reigns on high. Our God is risen. He is alive. He won the victory. He reigns on high. Sing that. Our God is risen. He is alive. He won the victory. He reigns on high. Our God is risen. He is alive. He won the victory. He reigns on high. And now 
now with the sons and the daughters. So let us sing our freedom. Oh, victory. Declare it with me. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. One more time, come on. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Yes, I am. I am a a child of God. One more time. I I am a a child of God. Come on now, let the devil know if you love the Lord and you're God's child. Come on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
I don't think he's convinced by some of you. Come on and praise the Lord like you know you're his child. Come on, praise him like you know you belong to the Lord. I'm not my own anymore. I've been bought with a price. The precious blood of the Lamb of God. I worship him today because all things have been made new. All things have passed away. Hallelujah. I'm a child of God. No longer a slave. Praise the name of the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Do you love Jesus this morning? Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for loving Him because He first loved you. Amen. Glad I'm not bound by the things I used to be bound by, but I've been set free. Praise God. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Thank God. Amen. Amen. One more time, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A children's church can be dismissed at this time. And if you want to grab your Bibles and turn with me to Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask Tim to join me on the stage for just a moment. He don't know what's coming. He's been nervous the whole time. I just told him I need him to help me with something real quick. Hello? Hold up. Hold on. The next back there thinking, what the world is he about to do with my husband? Yeah. It's all right. Romans 1, 16 and 17. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. He said, for this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. I've been ministering over the last couple of weeks on a series of messages of being unashamed. I, I spent the first four messages talking about worship, talking about Pentecostal worship, talking about the fact that I'm not ashamed to be a fundamental Pentecostal. And uh, the different styles of worship, how we shout, how we clap our hands, how we result. Some of the things that you've been doing this morning, I thank God for. Because the Bible said that, that God inhabits the praises of His people. Now, it, it says it more specifically that God inhabits the praise of Israel, but we're, we're, that's God's people, so we're part of God's people. Brought in by the blood of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, to the Jews and also to the Greeks. So we're all in this, Amen. So today I want to pick up on a different topic of what I'm unashamed of. And I believe it's going to minister to you. And I believe that God wants to do it in the lives of some people. The scripture says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I believe that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to everlasting life. I also believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. And on the third day he got up. Stripes born on his back was for our healing. The bruising and the chastisement that he took was for our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. I believe, not because it's in a book somewhere, but I believe by faith that Jesus Christ died that I could be saved. I believe that when he got up, he came out declaring, I now live that you may live also. I believe the life that I now live is not my own, for I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And I'm unashamed to declare it, not to just the people in this room, but those that are watching on media, that Jesus Christ is my Savior, and I love Him. He died for me. And I don't care who knows it. In this, this PC world, it's a... It's a, a common thing 
that's been said about a man being in love with another man. Well, I stand today to tell you I'm in love with a man. His name is Jesus. And I'm not ashamed to tell you I'm in love with a man named Jesus who laid that, listen, by this God commended His love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Man, He loves us today. But my question is, is does people realize that they need this man named Jesus? I, I wonder sometimes even in church, because it becomes so routine, it becomes so habitual, do we realize that we really need this man named Jesus. You can be seated for a moment. Thank you, Kels. So, Tim, I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. And I just need you to be honest. You'll speak in that thing a little better. Okay. All right. We got you now. I can hear you. <laughs> Tim, have you ever told a lie? Yes, sir. So what do we call people that lie? Liars. <clears throat> so you're admitting you're a liar? Back then. Hang on with then. me. Just answer my question. <laughs> Tim, have you ever taken something that didn't belong to you? Yes. What we call people that take things that don't belong to them? Stealers. So what thief. would that make you? A thief. No, a lying thief. A lying thief. <laughs> the Bible said that if we take the name of the Lord in vain, that we become blasphemous. Yes. Have you ever taken the name of the Lord in vain? Yes. So what you just admitted is that you're a lying, thieving Blasphemer. Yes. Okay. Jesus said that if a man looks upon another woman to lust after her, that he's committed adultery on his heart. Now, I know that Danette will kill you if you have to admit this, but <laughs> have you ever looked on a woman yes. in a lustful way? Yes. So what you've just admitted is you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous adulterer. There's not a person sitting in this room this morning could not say the same answers to the question. Now, I'm not judging Tim. By his own admission, he has been a lying, thieving, blasphemer, and an adulterer. You know what Tim needs? Tim needs a Savior. Yes, sir. A Savior. Everyone in this room, including the pastor, needs a Savior. There's absolutely no way that Tim, as good as he thinks he is, can fix the problem of being a lying, thieving, blaspheming adulterer. He can't fix that. There had to be a sacrifice. There had to be one that would surrender his life in a perfect position. And the only one in humanity that could have ever done that was a man named Jesus. Yes, sir. The Son of God. Thank you, Tim. Give Tim a hand, would you? I appreciate his honesty. The, the fact is, we all need a Savior. This man named Jesus. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. The Bible said, And she will bring forth the Son, and you will call His name Jesus, for He will save His people from their sins. Now, we sit here in church today and some people will say, well, preacher, you know, this is beyond me. I'm, I'm saved. I, you know, I don't want to talk about an experience that you had where you prayed one time and you asked the Lord to forgive your sins. I want to talk to you this morning about a lifestyle that you live that honors the King. That honors this man named Jesus. That you live a life that is fruitful and fruit bearing and that your fruit remain. That kind of lifestyle. Because I believe sometimes that we, we come to an altar and we pray and we ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins. But I believe without a shadow of a doubt that there are those of us, and I include myself, that sometimes get allured to go back to the darkness that we were called out of. And I believe sometimes we sit in church and we fellowship, we worship, we listen, we, we admonish, we carry on as we should as church people, sometimes neglecting the things that are the simplest. That Jesus came simply to save you from your sins. 
In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible said, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Let me tell you emphatically that there is no other way to the Father but by Jesus. There is no other way to eternal life but by the blood of the Lamb of God. There is no other way. There is absolutely no other way that you're going to find salvation. There's no other way that you're going to correct the issues in your life that were all lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterous people. The only way that you can fix that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved, but the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 10, verse 42 and 43. Paul is, or Peter is speaking. He said he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is, that he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. If you're going to find true salvation if you're going to find an unashamed lifestyle of salvation it's not going to come because your name's on the church roll it's not going to come because you put ties in the offering plate it's not going to come because you showed up for the events it's only going to come when you put your faith and your life in jesus christ he said if you believe in him you will receive the remission of your sins Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1, 15 and 16, he said, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. However, for this reason I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. What was Paul saying? Paul said when he saved me, he had to reach down into the depths of the gutters of sin and rescue me from the powers of hell that held me bound. He said, I was chief of all sinners. What I did to provoke the kingdom of God and the things that I did to anger Him. There was no reason for me to be saved but Jesus Christ through all long suffering reached down to where I was and rescued me from the powers of hell and set me free. What is He saying? He said He made me to be an example of His grace and His mercy and I can tell you today standing here in this congregation. I've been in this church all my life. I've been in this thing called the church all my life and there's been times that God had to come and rescue me because I found myself in a pit of hell but thank God that his arm is not so short that it cannot save but God reached down into the gutter of life and rescued me he said that Jesus did this as a pattern basically to say if you can save me God you can save anybody if you can rescue me from the powers of hell God you can rescue anybody I'm telling you today, I don't care how far you feel like you've gone. I don't care how deep you feel like you are. I don't care how much bad things you think you've done. I don't care how far you think you've gone that you can't be rescued. My God's arm is not so short that it cannot save. God can reach to where you are. He can come and cleanse you of all your unrighteousness. He can remove your transgressions as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered anymore. He can make all things new in your life. He can wash you in His blood. He can make, listen, though your sins be as scarlet, they can be whiter than snow. Why? Because of the precious blood of the Lamb of God. He tells Timothy later in 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 7, he said, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved. Now let me just stop here for just a moment because there'll be people that tell you that there's some that God's not concerned about. The Bible said he desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. I believe this. He desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, that the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. What was Paul telling Timothy? Paul said, Timothy, God sent his son Jesus Christ to die on that cross to become that mediator, to become that sacrifice, to become that propitiation for our sins, to come to that one 
that would take our place. Listen, friend, when He hung on that cross, the sins of the world were laid on Him, even to the point that God the Father, it seemed that He had turned His face from His Son, that the Father, the Son cried out to the Father, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Listen, friend, that's what sin will do in your life. It'll separate you from the presence of God. Jesus came to bear those sins so that you could go free. I wish I had some saved folks in this room this morning. Some saved folks that know what it is to be saved, to be delivered. Some saved folks that know what it is not to be addicted anymore. Some saved folks that know what it is not to be on your way to hell anymore. I wish I had some saved folk in here that would know what it was to act like in the presence of God. To know that you've been called out of darkness into His marvelous light. Why? That you could show forth the praises of Him. Listen, friend, I wish I had some saved folk in here that knew what it was to be bound, but knows what it is to be free. I wish I had had some saved folk that knew what it was to be addicted, but the chains of addiction have been broken off your life. I'm telling you, I know what it is to be set free by the blood of the Lamb of God. He's my mediator. He's my advocate. Woo! And He's my soon coming King. Right now, He's making intercession for me. Right now, He's calling on the Father on my behalf. Right now, He's saying my servant is serving my, my kingdom and my gospel. And He's declaring my gospel. Father, anoint Him. Oh, listen, friend. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is sent by the Father so that we can be broken. That we can be broken from the chains and addictions of this world. Listen, God wants to do it in your life. He wants to set you free. He wants to set you free. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. He said, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. There is no other foundation. There is no other way. I don't care what Oprah says. Come on now. There are people out there that tell you there's these many ways to get to God, but there's only one way. There's only one way. John said in 1 John 5, 11 and 12, he said, and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, that this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. There's no life but in Him. The scripture said it's in him that I live and move and have my being. John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I'm not here to try to preach you some loosey-goosey gospel. I'm not here to try to tell you this morning that when you get saved, everything's going to be all right and everything's going to be better. Matter of fact, the warfare gets intense when you step onto the other side. But there is a Father. There is an Advocate. There is one that's fighting for you. There is one that's going to see you through the storm. There is one that's going to be with you. There is one that will never leave you nor forsake you. There will be one that will forgive you. There will be one that calls the weapons of warfare not to be carnal but to pulling down a stronghold. There is one that will say there is no weapon formed against you that shall prosper. It doesn't matter what the devil throws your way. I come to tell you this morning you've got one fighting for you on your side. He said if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side I surely would have perished. But I stand today victorious I stand today a conqueror because I've got the Lord on my side he's the way he's the truth he's the life and if you're going to have access to the father it only comes through the son Jesus Christ there is no other way John chapter 3 Jesus is speaking speaking to Nicodemus, and he says to Nicodemus, he said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Listen, I want you to take a a ride with me real quick in in, 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 in our memories. Can we just go back to Gethsemane for a moment? I find a Savior in a place of prayer, wrestling between deity and humanity. Wrestling in prayer to the point that he's praying so profusely that his sweat's becoming like drops of blood. He's crying out to the Father, pleading with God, wrestling with his will and God's will. Saying to the Father, if it's your will, 
let this cup pass from me. But breaking and releasing himself into the will of the Father, he said, but not my will be done, but your will be done. Three times he prayed this. After praying and relinquishing himself to the, to the will of the Father, which had been set up from the beginning, he goes into that garden. Soldiers come. They grab him. They take him into a, a praetorium, a courtyard. In that courtyard, they begin to question him and humiliate him, calling him names. They're smacking him and beating on him. They're placing fake robes on him and, and mockingly bowing before him and hailing him as king of the Jews. Putting a reed in his hand as a scepter. Even taking the reed from him and smiting him across the face. Plucking his beard. Slapping him across the face. Just openly humiliating him. It was necessary for him to go through this so that you and I could be free. He stands before Pilate. Pilate asking him all these questions. They're going through all the routine. Pilate comes out and says, I find no cause to crucify this man. I find no cause to kill him. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll offer you Barabbas or Jesus. I'll release one of them. They cried for Barabbas. They said, what am I to do with Jesus? They said, crucify him. Pilate, thinking that he could justify the moment, ordered that he would be scourged. They took him to a whipping post in the open area. Bound him to that whipping post and with shards of metal and glass on the end of the tips of belts, they began to whip him and beat him. Literally till flesh was ripped from his body and his organs were exposed. But it was necessary that you and I could be healed. For Isaiah prophesied that by his stripes we are healed. The devil was enjoying every moment. The devil, I imagine as they were whipping him and beating him as the crowd shouted out with jeers. Listen, folks, this sound crowd not days before was heralding him. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But now they're shouting, crucify him. Crucify him. They're beating him until his flesh is opened up. His organs are exposed. He's going through this horrendous pain. Beaten to the point that the scriptures declared, Isaiah declared that there was no beauty that we should behold him. After whipping him and beating him, Pilate brings him back before the people and says, look what I've done to him. Look what pain I've brought him. This is enough. The crowd shouted, no, this is not what we asked for. Crucify him. Crucify him. I believe as that crowd shouted, every devil in hell, every demon in hell was crying out with him. Yes, kill him. Kill him. He's a thorn. He's bothersome. He's casting us out. He's wreaking havoc in our kingdom. We don't want him any place but dead. So Pilate released him to the Jewish people. They took him and made him carry his own cross. He walked up that Via Dolorosa, up to a hill called Calvary or Golgotha, the place of the skull. They laid that cross down. And with every strike of the hammer, I could imagine Jesus writhing in pain and crying out. Oh! Every time the hammer blowed a nail, as that jagged nail ran through his, his hands and his feet, I could hear him cry every blow of the hammer. Oh! But every cry was filled with mercy. Every cry was filled with grace. Every cry was filled with love. Because no greater love hath any man than this that he would lay down his life for his friends. They nailed him to a cross. And up to this point, folks, it probably looked like everything was going the way the devil intended it to go. But the devil made a mistake. The soldiers made a mistake. The people made a mistake because as they nailed him to the cross, the next thing that happened 
was going to be transformative in all of Christianity because he declared as they began to raise that cross and suspend him between heaven and earth on that wooden cross, something transformative began to take place because Jesus had already declared, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Listen, friend, when they raised that cross and suspended Jesus on that cross between heaven and earth, he was lifted up, and then salvation began to take place. Why? Because as the blood flowed, as the stripes were there, as the wounding took place, So much that he gave his son. If the devil would have thought his plan through, he would have never went that route. They suspended him. The sins of the world rested on him. He cried out to the Father, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he thought that God the Father had turned away from him and left him all alone. Jesus Christ. That's not the end of the story. He did his body in a barred tomb. Joseph of Arimathea come and begged the body of Jesus. And he laid him in a barred tomb. And on the first day, I imagine hell was getting all in a party. I imagine they had some alcohol and some drugs. And they were partying in the pits of hell. On the second day, they, they sent the death behind death. That had still got him. to those that were captive there on the third day something began to shake rattle and roll in that tomb death began to lo turn loose the grave lifeless now had life in it the stone was rolled away my God got up victorious up out of the grave my Lord he resurrected It was necessary. And this is the beauty of it, folks. Jesus said in John 3 and 36, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. He who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. See, you've got a choice to make today. The choice is, is do I live my life born again? Listen, you might say, well, well preach, you know I'm saved. My name, I, listen, I don't care what you... Well, I don't care what prayer you prayed before. If you've gone back to darkness, if you've backslid slid into old lifestyles and old ways, you, you, you need to make a recommitment. You need to come to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I've messed up. I've, I've, I've stepped away from you. I'm not abiding your word. He said, if you believe in the Son, you have everlasting life. But if you do not believe in the Son, you shall not see life. If I could go back to that First John scripture, First John chapter 5, just take me back there for just a moment. Look what he says here. He said, this is a testimony that God has given us eternal life, and that life is in his Son. Keep going. He who has the Son has life. If you do not have the Son of God, you do not have life. Eternal life is only found in Jesus. You know what I found? I found that the pride and the ego of people have hurt, really hurt them in the house of God. We... We, we put forth a perception to people that we're okay, but we really know what's going on in the closet. We really know what's going on behind the closed doors. We really know what we're hiding and what we're trying to keep away. And what we're, Listen, how do you know that, preacher? Because I've been there, folks. I stood and preached in pulpits, knowing that in a dark place in my life, I was hiding things that I hope nobody ever found out. I knew what it was. I knew what it was to come to church and put forth a perception that everything was okay and impress everybody else, but God knew my heart. Listen to me, church folks. Just because you sit here every Sunday, just because you clap your hands, just because you go through the routine, does not guarantee you eternal life. What guarantees you eternal life is that you have given yourself completely to Jesus Christ and you've been washed in His blood. 
It's not about what antics you put on in a Pentecostal church or what motions you go through to say that you did this, that, or the other. It's about you having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And listen, folks, it is not head knowledge as much as it is heart knowledge. Because there's a lot of people that declare, I know him. But the real question is, does he know you? Jesus said, there'll be many in that day that stand before me and say, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out devils? Have we not healed the sick? Have we not done random miraculous works? Listen, that sounds like the church, folks. He's going to say, you, depart from me, you which work iniquity. I never knew you. This might sound judgmental and this might sound harsh, but as a pastor, I've got to say it this morning. There's some of you that have never cast out devils, never healed the sick, never done many miraculous works in his name, but yet you still live in a lifestyle where you think you're okay. And you're not born again. Because one that's born again is dead to sin. That's the scripture, folks. Why would we want to continue to play Russian roulette with our soul when eternity's at stake? Why would we want to play a game with our soul trying to appease church people and trying to appease religious folks and trying to make them feel good about us when God knows who we really are? Folks, I don't want to play that game. I don't want to stand before you in a pulpit and preach and declare the gospel and see many miraculous works and stand before him on that day and he says, I don't know you. But God, I've been preaching for 25 years. God, I've seen hundreds of people saved. God, I've seen people healed, delivered, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Go, I've seen these things. I've, I've seen you do it. Yeah, but I don't know you. What a shame to get to the brink of eternity. Played the game all this time. And then stand before Him. And you lose life. Because you refused to fully surrender. To fully surrender. Look at this. 1 John chapter 4, 9 and 10. He said, in this the love of God was manifested toward us. That God has sent His only begotten Son into the world. That we might live through Him. i got to live my life through Him. And this is love. Not that we love God but that He loved us. And He sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. In other words, He's the one that took the sacrifice. He's the one that surrendered His life so that you and I could live. He's the, prop the propitiation for our sins. He's the advocate. He's the intercessor. He's the sacrificial lamb. He's the one that was laid for all of eternity. He's the one that shed His blood so that you and I could go free. So why roll the dice? They say, well, when I get there, I hope I'm okay. Why not begin to live our life and abhor the things that are not of Him and cleave to the things that are? Why roll the dice and try to fit as much as we can in this world when Jesus has plainly told us, I've not called you to be of this world. I've called you to be in this world. And for you to come out from among them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing, and then I'll receive you. Why do we want to continue to play with dead things? When we know they bring nothing but death. Hello? I hope you're sitting quietly because you're thinking. What I'm trying to get you to understand is, this is no game, folks. This is eternity. We live our lives as if there's a tomorrow and there's no guarantee. You don't know that you might leave this place and never be able to walk in this door again because somebody hits you going down the road and take your life and you're gone for eternity. There's no turning back at that point. You're trying to scare us, preacher? Yes! I'm trying to get you to realize that hell is real. That eternity is real. You just don't die and they put you in a box and, you're, and that's it. No! It's appointed that a man wants to die and after this, the judgment. I don't want to play this game with my life. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 1 through 4, therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast that every transgression and disobedience received the just reward. Stop there for just a moment. Go back. Look what it says. If every transgression and disobedience received the just reward. In other words, David put it this way in the Psalms. He said, if, if the Lord marked iniquity, who could stand before him? If your sin was given its just reward, You'd be in hell today. 
But amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Why? Because of that grace. So it's grace that's brought me safe thus far. And grace is going to lead me home. Listen, folks, what are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you, it was because that he didn't give us what we were deserved. He didn't give us what we should have had. But the Bible said, how shall we escape? The next verse, how shall we escape when we neglect so great a salvation when it the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? Verse 4, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. What's the scripture saying, folks? You're not going to escape if you neglect this offer of salvation from Jesus. He wants to take your sin. He wants to take your hurt. He wants to take your pain. He wants to heal you of frustrations and disappointments and and all this stuff. He wants to do a work in your life and completely and totally set you free. Fears. I was singing a moment ago, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Why? Because I'm a child of God. How, how, can, how can we sing that kind of declaration? Because old things have passed away and all things have become new. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. I'm not bound to the things of this world. I'm not afflicted by the things of this world. I'm free. I'm free. Thank God I'm free because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I've been set free by the Lamb of God. That's why I can stand before you and declare that I will not escape if I neglect so great a salvation. But man, it is a great salvation. And it's one that Jesus has given unto us all. I like the way Peter put it. I, I quoted part of it just a moment ago, First Peter 2 and 9. He said, but you're a, royal, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of, out of darkness into his marvelous light. Why is it, why is it that, that we as people of God sometimes get called over into this great light, but yet we're still attracted to the darkness? Why is it that we come over into the good things of God, but yet there's still an appeal? I'm not going to lie to you. The Scripture even bears it out. There's pleasures in those sins. There's pleasures in those things. But they're only for a season. They're very temporary. But the things that God gives us are very eternal. He can give you a peace that passes all understanding, a joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. He can do this for you. And He said, I've called you out of that darkness into my marvelous light. Why? So that you could show forth the praises of Him. You see, when we come together, the one reason we should praise Him because we're not in darkness anymore. Matter of fact, the Word tells us that He's taken you out of that darkness and brought you into His light because you're not children of darkness anymore. You're children of the light. And that day that's coming, the day of the Lord, is not going to catch you unexpected. Why? Because I'm no longer in darkness. I'm not, I'm not in darkness anymore. I'm in light where everything's revealed. It's very known to me. And so while I'm in light, I'm going to praise Him. While I'm in light, I know my name's written in the last book of life. I'm going to exalt Him. I'm going to live my life to glorify Him. Why? Because I'm chosen. I'm royal. I'm holy. I'm peculiar. I'm strange to the things of this world. I'm different. I'm not what everybody else is. I'm not what everybody expects me to be. I'm not trying to fit in. I'm not trying to go alone to get along. My life should be lived as a testimony and an indictment to the sins of this world. My life should be evident of what it is to be contrary to the things of this world. My life should be offensive to the flesh of the things of this world. People should feel conviction because you allow the light to shine in a way that people say, that's not how I'm living. Something's got to change in me. Now, there'll be people that say, you shouldn't act like that around me. You're judging me. No, 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 no. I'm just living my life according to the book. I'm just living my life according to the word of the Lord. I'm just living my life separate for his cause. I'm just living my life to be what God's called me to be. And listen, if you're convicted by that, that's not me. That's the Holy Spirit trying to tell you, get your life right. There'll be people that will try to push it off and try to 
get you away from your own thinking. But listen, this is what he's done for us. Colossians chapter 1, 13 and 14. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. He's conveyed unto us, into the, conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Go back to the previous verse, please. Look what He's done. He's called you out of darkness. He's delivered you from darkness. He's conveyed unto us the kingdom of His Son. What's the kingdom? The Bible said that the kingdom of God is righteousness, is peace, is joy in the Holy Ghost. Listen, this is what He's conveyed unto us. I'm not in darkness anymore. I'm in the light. I'm not living like I used to live. I'm living differently. I'm not acting the way I used to act, talking the way I used to talk, walking the way I used to walk. Why? Because He's called me out of that darkness. He's delivered me from that darkness. And now I'm living in the light. And if I'm living in the light, I've got to live my life to show forth His praises. <laughs> Matthew five sixteen, that last verse. He said, let your light so shine before men. They may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. <laughs> Joel, I get real nervous when sinners get comfortable around me. When I get around sinners and they know the life that I proclaim, but yet they continue to talk the way they talk or try to invite me into conversations without any kind of remorse or try to tell me things that I don't need to hear, I get real nervous. You say, well, preacher, that's on them. It may be, but I want to go back and look at me and say, am I open to the door that I find those things acceptable? Am I opening up my life in a way that people think it's okay to talk to me or act around me or do certain things around me that my light that's shining. Listen. Does Jesus abide in you? Yes. So if Jesus abides in you, the same Jesus that abides in you is the same Jesus that just stepped his foot into territory and a legion of demons come begging him to leave him alone. And that same Jesus that abides in you has the ability to claim territory that the devil say, whoa, 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 we don't want to mess with him. But why is it that devils in this world find it okay to come at us as Christians when that Jesus abides in us? Why is it okay that people find it all right to blaspheme the name of God and it doesn't make us uncomfortable? I heard someone say, GD, yesterday, boy, it made my skin crawl, my hair stand up. It, it's, it's offensive to me. I can't stand it. I turned that conversation off real quick. I don't want anything to do with that. You know, people come to me. I've had people come to me and say, did you hear so-and-so? I turned that off real quick. I don't want to be involved in that kind of stuff. And I want them to know up front, I'm, I'm not opening up the door for you to allow sin to be entangled with the affairs of this life. I'm not allowing that to come. Somebody got to help me this morning. I'm not, I'm not opening that door. And we as Christians, we participate. I had a gentleman call me on the phone the other day. We were in conversation and this is what he said to me. He said, I want to talk to you about something. You know I like to gossip. I said, well, stop right there. I don't want to hear it. He said, but you might be interested. No, I'm not interested in gossip. I'm not interested in that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't want to hear that kind of stuff. It's opening a door. You say, preacher, I, I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. This is this is the way the scripture simply wraps it up. Neither give place to the devil. I'm not allowing him a foothold in my life because I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm called. I'm appointed. And I'm living my life in the light so I don't have to play with the darkness and I can show forth the praises of Him with my life because I'm not in darkness anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to be different. I'm going to abhor that which is evil and I'm going to cleave to that which is good. I'm going to abstain from all appearances of evil. I'm not going to participate in the things of this world. I don't want to play the games and hold the hand of the devil any longer. I don't care 
what people say about me. I don't care what people try to do in my life. I don't care what people try to allure me into. I don't care. I'm going to live my life to please God. Some people say, this is strange. No, it's not. When a man gets convicted and says, i got to change my life, this is what you do. You run to the Father. It's not my agenda here. It's not my agenda. I'm not trying to accomplish something for myself here. I'm just trying to be obedient to the Spirit of God. I'm trying to give you the Word of the Lord this morning. Some of you will continue on playing Russian rule help with your soul, and you're going to continue on your pride and your ego, and you're going to pretend like you got it all together. But what you really know deep down inside is there's some things that's got to change if you're going to be what God's called you to be. You're trying to straddle light and darkness. You're trying to live your life in sin, but trying to live your life in the church. You can't do that, folks. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve, whether it be God. Jehovah or whether it be the things of this world no man can serve two masters either he'll hate the one and love the other or he'll love the one and hate the other you got to decide today decide today choose you today whom you're going to serve but as the priest of my home the husband of my wife the father of my kids as for me and my house we're going to serve the Lord not playing these games any longer. Not going through the motions any longer. Not trying to be enticed by the things of sin. Ryan, I got, got my truck yesterday morning. I always say a little prayer before I get going. I thought I was going to Alabama. They rerouted me. I ended up going to Atlanta. But I got in the truck. I sat in the seat. I said, today, devil... I don't want to hear any mess from you. I got specific with him what I didn't want to hear or think about or be tempted by or think on. You have that kind of authority? Yes. Every high thing that exalts itself against Christ, every thought, I can bring it into captivity and cast cast it off. So before I even started my day, I put the devil on notice. I don't want to mess with you today. I'm his, sanctified, clean. I'm I'm not going to naively stand here and tell you that he didn't try to mess with me yesterday. He did. But I reminded him, I'm not playing games with you. Ain't got time for your garbage. Because listen, what if I'm on that road and I'm out there toying around with things? And somebody hits me and kills me. And i got to go stand in eternity and answer to God for that. There would be some people that would say, Well, you know, God's grace is sufficient. His mercies are renewed every day. I think he would overlook that. Would he? You know, the scripture said, No sin shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So do I want to chance sin in my life? Hoping that when I get there, that his grace is going to be sufficient in me? Do I want to... Do I want to chance that when he's already told me in his word, no sin shall enter the kingdom of heaven? Do I want to take the chance of be participating in a simple lifestyle? Confessing salvation but participating in sin. Do I want to take the chance of standing before him with eternity weighing in the balance, playing the game of in and out, up and down, sideways, knowing that that book tells me that there'll be no sin that'll enter the kingdom of heaven. Preacher, you hurt my feelings today. Good. Preacher, you offended me today. Good. You're being hard today. Good. I'm tired of playing games. I'm tired of going through routines. If I can say this on behalf of myself, I'm tired of the devil messing with me and at times winning. When greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. I'm personally tired of the darkness being tempting. I'm personally tired 
of the allure of the things of the world appealing to my eye. I'm tired of it. I want to set my affection on things above. I want to set my heart like a flint to the things of God. I want to, I want to get my focus where the, when the devil comes along, he don't even have my attention. I'm so locked in. I'm so focused that none of that appeals to me. Today, I want to give whoever desires to pray. I want to give you the chance to be born again. I want to give you the chance that old things be passed away and all things become new. You know, every now and then, I'll take my truck to the car wash because as I go through this life, contaminants connect themselves to them to that truck and I want them off and so I go through the wash to get cleansed to get it off you know in life as I go through this world things try to connect themselves to me and I'm not ashamed to tell you but there are times I go right back to the blood and I say Jesus search me Jesus know me Jesus wash me Jesus created me a clean heart. Jesus renew a right spirit within me. Jesus, I need you to help me in my thought process. Jesus, I need you to help me in my actions. Jesus, I need you to help me with my words. Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Jesus, I need your help here. I'm flesh. I'm human. I fail. But God, I come to you and fall at your knees and I ask you to help me. Take me through the wash again. Cleanse me again. I did it this morning sitting in my office chair. I bowed my head before the Father and I said, Lord, I need your help today. But before I go out there, I need you to do a work in me. Help me. Forgive me. Set me free. Deliver me. Today, Today could be the day that begins eternity for somebody. I don't know. We've all got an appointment in here. We're not guaranteed to come back to the next service. But right now where I believe the Holy Spirit is convicting folks, right now where I believe maybe God's dealing with your heart, maybe right now if you just, just look back to yesterday, there's probably some of you sitting here today that you would say, you know what, preacher, i got some things I need to make sure me and God are okay on. That's all right. You, you don't have to. Listen, right now I rebuke the spirit of pride and ego. I come against you worried about what people might think or say about you. I don't care. Listen, folks, we're talking about eternity. When you stand up before God, there's not going to be the, the only accuser that's going to be there is Satan. And when he starts accusing, if you're a lamb of God, uh, a child of God, then he's going to tell that he's going to tell that accuser to get away, and he's going to receive you in, and you're going to be washed and clean. And that's all that really matters. He's the accuser. He's up there lying on you now, right now. He's trying to make you fall down and 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 and, and trying to get you in a mess. But God loves you, folks. He sent His Son for you. You don't have to go through these games. Created me a clean heart, right? God, and renew a right spirit within me. Maybe you, maybe you need the experience of being born again. Maybe you need the experience of all things becoming new. Maybe you need the experience today of, of a new heart, a new, a new mind, a new way of thinking. Maybe you need, maybe you need to commit your words to Him. Maybe you need to commit your actions, your thoughts to Him. Maybe, maybe you could admit like Tim did today and say, "There's been times that I've." I've admitted, I, I admit that there's been times that I've thought things about ladies or I've thought things about people or I've thought things that I should have, would have, could have. But I'm admitting today I need a Savior. I need a Savior. I think we all could admit that today. We need a Savior. So all that will, all that will humbly come and fall on this altar before God and cry out to Him and say, Lord, I need You. I need a Savior. I need You to cleanse me. I need You to help me. I need You to wash me. I need You to create in me. I need You to do this work in me. I need You to help me, God. If you're willing to humbly admit that today and acknowledge that you need Him, as Stephen's already done, I want to ask all that will to come and find your place in this altar and cry out to Him.
If you need saving today, give it to Him. If you need cleansing today, give it to Him. If you need healing today, give it to Him. Whatever you need, bring it to the Lord. Would you come this morning? Would you find a place of prayer? Cry out to God. Repent if it needs to be repented of. Give it to the Lord. Yield it to God. Give it all to Him. Allow Him to create in you. It's okay to admit I need to get saved all over again. That's all right. Bring it to God. Bring it to the Savior. Commit yourself completely to Him. If you're in this altar this morning, as you're praying, listen to me just one moment. If you're bringing it, leave it here. If you're you're believing that He's going to do it new in you, leave it here. Don't pick it up from this altar. If you're believing He's going to take it, if you're believing that He's going to make you new, leave it here. All things new in my life, God. All things new in my life. I don't want to play this eternal game. Die and go to hell. It's not worth it, Jesus. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me and make me new again. Redeem me from my sins. Help me, Lord, to have the remission of my sins. God, to give it all to you, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Lord, if there's addiction in our life, break it off of them. If there's things that bind them, break it off of them. If there's things that hinder them, break it off of them. It's your anointing that will destroy the yokes of bondage in our lives, God. Let your anointing be manifested in their lives. Hear their cry today. God, a thief cried out, simply remember me when you come into your kingdom. And you declare to him today, you shall be with me in paradise. God, it doesn't take some long drawn out thing to get right with you. It's just a, a heart of confession. A heart of surrender. All that I am, God. I bring it to you. All my hurts, all my pains, all my anger, all my frustration, my sin, my shortcomings, my failures, my disappointments, my shame. I bring it to you. My lust, my perversions, my covetousness, everything, God, I bring it to you. All that I am, I surrender myself fully. I surrender myself fully. I give myself completely. Help me, Father, to be what, I, what I've been called to be by you. Help me to give all that I am to you, Jesus. Come on, give it to the Lord. My life is yours. Come on, give it to Him. My hope is in you only. My heart you hold. Because you made this sinner holy. Give it all to Him. Holy. Your glory is so beautiful. I fall down to my knees in all. Come on. And the heartbeat of my life. Is to worship in your life Cause your glory is so beautiful Your glory is so beautiful My life is yours My hope is in only my heart you hold you made this sinner holy and holy
these are still praying, would you stand all across the house? Just as an act of surrender, we're going to the bridge, guys. Just as an act of surrender, we're going to sing this bridge again. In your own way, would you just worship him for just a moment, even out, maybe singing out this, this bridge, which is very simple. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Jesus, you are good. I just want us, before we go any further, change the order of the service. Let's just worship Him for just a moment. Let's just worship Him just a moment. Come on, let's declare His goodness. Come on, just praise Him across this house right now. Come on, worship Him. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, you Come on. Come on, declare it with us in this house. Come on.
fall down to my knees at all in the heartbeat of my life is to worship in your life because your glory is so beautiful your glory is so beautiful And the heartbeat of my life is to worship in your life. Cause your glory is so beautiful. Your glory is so beautiful. You believe that this morning? Praise the Lord. I want, I want us to have one last prayer as a closing prayer, but I want us to do it together. And I know this might be a little bit different than what we normally do. Don't worry about making any special moves or anything, but in some way, could you connect with the person that's next to you? Just some way connect with them. I want us to pray together. And I want you to pray specifically for that person that's next to you. That God would help them be the light that they need to be. That God would help them to express the glorious salvation, the great salvation that's in their life. God would help them to walk this earth and walk this life dead to sin and alive to Him. And that all that they come in contact with, that they would let that light shine. You might not remember all of what I just said, but you know what I'm saying. I want to be the best me for Jesus I can be. I want to be the best I can live my life in a way that brings glory and honor to Him, and I want my light to shine in a way that honors Jesus. I'm not worried about appeasing people. I just want to live my life to bring Him glory. I want you to pray for one another as we close. I want you to pray for me as your pastor, that God would help me to be brighter, and live in, in more of His glory, and that God would help me to, to be more effective for His kingdom. That's why I want you to pray for one another. Because we're in this thing together, folks. The people you're bound with now, brothers and sisters in Christ, washed in the same blood, delivered from the same hell, written in the same Lamb's book of life, God's doing this for you. Let's pray for one another and pray as we close. Father, in the name of Jesus, we acknowledge our need of you, our need for a Savior, our need to live in your glory and your light. You called us out of darkness. You called us to live our lives separate, and God, I'm asking you to help us to do that. Help us to be repulsed by the things of this world, the things that this world has to offer. Help them to not be enticing to us any longer. Help us not to be drawn a way of our own lust, but God, help us to surrender our lives completely to you every day. Help us, Lord, when our feet hit the floor that we put the devil on notice that that day we're going to live our lives to bring glory and honor to Jesus. Father, I ask you right now for every person in this house, those that have come to this altar and laid things down, those that prayed at their seats, those that interceded for others, God, I pray for every person in this room, every person watching online. God, that you would manifest your glory, your presence, and your life. Help them, God, to walk in the fullness of your light and let their light so shine before men that those men and women and children may see their good works and bring glory to you, Father. Father, I pray that we live separate. I pray we live holy. I pray we live sanctified. I pray, God, we live cleansed. And when the world tries to contaminate our lives, that we run back to that place of separation that we run back to that place of sanctification God we get cleansed God that we surrender our lives to you Father I pray that we live dead to sin but alive to you I pray that in you we live and move and have our being God I pray that the fullness of the spirit of God would abide in us and shine through us that the world could see your glorious light and that those that we come in contact with that we can be effective witnesses effective witnesses of Jesus Christ 
God, that we live our lives separate, I pray. Keep us in your care. Help us to leave this place focused. Help us to leave this place determined to be better, to do better, to live better for your kingdom and for your glory. Help us every day of our life to to realize and recognize that we need a Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for giving your life for me. Thank you for coming to this earth and facing the ridicule and the shame and the embarrassment. Thank you for doing that for me. As my kids used to pray, you didn't have to do it. But I'm so glad you did because you did it for me. Thank you for not coming to this world to condemn me. But through you, I might be saved and have eternal life. Help me to live my life unashamed. Help me not to worry about what people may say or think or do. Help me to walk in your glory, your presence, your power. I thank you for that, Jesus. I thank you for that, Jesus. Now, if you'll release that hand and just raise it toward heaven, just thank the Lord. Thank, thank, if you don't thank for anything, thank Him that you're saved. Thank Him that you, your sins have been washed. Thank Him that you've been sanctified and cleansed. Thank Him that you're not your own, but you've been bought with a price. Thank Him today. Father, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Been so good to us, Lord. We cannot thank you enough. Cannot thank you enough. Cannot thank you enough. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Praise your name. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate you being here. If you can be back tonight, if the Lord's willing, my intent tonight is to tie the act of salvation to something else that I'm not ashamed of. I'm not ashamed that my God's a healer. He's the Lord, my God, that heals all my diseases. But I believe that salvation and healing go hand in hand. If you go through the Gospels, you'll see time after time where Jesus not only healed their bodies, but he forgave their sins. And I believe that I'll be able to show you the connection in Scripture. But I believe that my God's a divine healer. I believe that he still heals the broken. I still believe that he heals sickness. I still believe... That when we anoint with oil and pray the prayer of faith, that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I still believe that. So Lord willing, I'm going to try to make that connection tonight. So if you can be back tonight at 6 o'clock, I'd love to have you here. And if you come tonight and you're not well in your body, I'm going to believe tonight that God's going to heal you. I'm not going to step out there and say it's going to be a healing service, but anytime Jesus is here, it can be a healing service. Amen. There's sometimes you got to have faith to be healed. Paul looked upon a man and said he saw that he had faith to be healed and prayed for him and he was healed. It ain't all on the preacher. And it ain't all on God. We got a part to play in this too. But I still believe God heals. I don't believe that he's left us here to be bound by the afflictions of this world. I believe that God can set us free and heal our bodies. Amen. So I encourage you to be back tonight at 6 o'clock. If you can't be here for whatever reason, pray for me. Pray for the service. Pray that God will anoint and do a mighty work. I'm believing for God to do that. Amen. I love you guys. Thank you all so much for being here today. If you see, we got several visitors with us today. Shake their hands. Hug their necks. Welcome them to Daystar. Some are just visiting because they, they love me. <laughs> and uh, But I love you guys. I hope you have a great afternoon, and I look forward to seeing you tonight. God bless.